Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. And I'm going to circle back on the video that I made yesterday on Dirtbag Dijanae Carrington and her eye gouge to the right eye of Caitlin Clark. I said at the time, and I said it, and I remind you, I said it in our live podcast that I did with Ben Daniel. I said, there's no way she did that on purpose. While people were in the comments saying she did it on purpose. I said, there's no way. There's no way that someone would purposely eye gouge somebody in a basketball game. There's just too much that can possibly happen. You don't have to like somebody, but you're not trying to end somebody's career, so I'm thinking. But then I saw the reverse video that has now been seen just about everywhere. And if you haven't seen it yet, I will refresh your memory because you shouldn't have forgotten about it. However, I will refresh your memory. So this is the video seen around the world. Clear, eye gouge, hand goes up to contest, open fingered, and comes down like this right into the eye. As she's looking right at her, I've read comments about from people who disagree, who have said she's looking at the ball. Well, I don't know if you look at it, the ball's behind her already as her hand is coming down. And I know other people say in slow motion, you can make anything look intentional. Now let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about that. This was not a natural play. You can sit here and you can say whatever you want to me. You will not convince me that this was a natural motion of a hand. I was then sent four videos of NBA situations where a person got poked in the eye. Remember, I'm not talking about being poked in the eye. I'm talking specifically this. This. This is not the same thing. I got to... So I'm not typically very active on Twitter. Our Twitter handle, we have 100 followers. All I do on Twitter is I typically share all of our videos on the Twitter and hope that that helps get traction for videos in different platforms. Just like I do for Instagram and Facebook. Now, I have I got into some conversations with people, and I have no problem going back and forth. I can keep it perfectly respectful. The reality is a lot of folks that disagree with me tend to not keep it respectful. They'll go in the direction of calling me a cracker, ass cracker, a honky, a racist, and all kinds of other slurs. If they if I'm if they knew I was Hispanic, they'd call me a, a spick. I, I've been called Amish. I don't know how that's offensive. I mean, people there are Amish people, but whatever. Um, I got called homosexual, not with the word homosexual. But got called homosexual. I'm not, but if you think that hurts my feelings, then go right ahead. <clears throat> do you. you. You can do you. But I did engage with some conversations with people, and then this one particular person sent four videos of different NBA plays. One with uh, D'Angelo Russell shooting a left-handed jump shot. When you shoot a jumper... Your hand goes up and it comes down. Your hand doesn't go up and stay like that. So what happened on this one? His hand went up. He shot the jump shot. It came down as he's coming down. And the defender ran into his hand. That's not what happened here. Kaylee Clark didn't run into anybody's hand. Kaylee Clark is passing the ball. There's a difference. I keep I I don't understand why this is so complicated for some people. 
So the defender got his eye got cut, and I don't. I mean, I don't know if he got hit in the eye or around the eye, but he's he was bleeding. But that's not a comparable video. That's not a comparable situation. Another one where <clears throat> Anthony Davis gets poked in the eye when a guy swipes to grab the rebound and he hits Anthony Davis in the face. And of course, Anthony Davis is made out of porcelain glass, so anytime Anthony Davis gets hit, it looks like he got shot by a, a, a bazooka or, or or a shotgun. And then, of course, he does his little histrionics and stuff like that. But if he got swiped in the eye, again, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about incidental contact where someone got maybe brushed and you're, you're, the finger hit the eye. We're talking about turning this crap into a damn serpent-like motion. I mean, it's not even remotely close. And yet all I get is a whole bunch of people sending me these videos. <clears throat> Another one was James Harding getting swiped at and someone nicked him in the face. Again, he wasn't gouged in the eye. And then there was a third with P.J. Tucker hitting somebody. Maybe that was the James Harding one, but there was a one with P.J. Tucker where he's flip, flicking his hand back or whatever, and he happens to catch them in the – he's not even looking when he flicks his hand back. And he catches him in the face, and then there's that. Now, none of those are remotely comparable. No one has yet to send me something that looks like what we just saw. No one, because it doesn't exist. It's never happened before where you see a player clearly – Decide, I'm going to jab this girl. I'm going to jab this person in the eye socket. Like, your hands don't go like this and then close down like this and then turn that at an angle like this. And then I will let you know, and I'm going to show it to you in a second. So once. Now, this is the entire play. And I'm going to show you the entire play right now so you see the difference. Now, I was looking for a video that I saw a little earlier as well where at the end of the play, you saw Dijanae Carrington dapping up her teammates while Caitlin Clark's on the ground. Caitlin Clark's on the ground and she's dapping up her teammates. They're congratulating her for taking her out. But let's take, take a look at the entire play. And I want you to see the normal person in comparison to what Dijanae Carrington is. The normal person. Because the normal person would have probably reacted a little bit differently than the way Dijanae Carrington did. Clark gets hit in the face by Carrington and is down. Bring it back. By Carrington. Stabbed in the eye. As you can see, Dijanae Carrington didn't even look at her. Didn't even look at her. You clearly got her in the eye. You know you got her in the eye. You can't sit here and say you didn't know you got her in the eye. You know you did. You know you did. And you don't look at her. In fact, you then go on the break, get a layup while she's on the ground still. This is a minute and a half into the game. Look at who she's on the ground. She's still on the ground. <clears throat> she has one teammate come over, another teammate come over. At no point does DJ Nate Carrington come to check on this woman. Apologize, say a word. Not a word. You just eye gouge somebody in MMA when guys eye gouge by accident, they're apologizing in a cage, and these two people are having fist fights. They're trying to beat the crap out of each other. And when you see a guy get poked in the eye. The guy who commits the foul is warned by the official typically and told, take care of your weapons. If you have to warn you again, you're going to lose a point. This didn't even get called a foul. But even those guys who are beating the tar out of each other <clears throat> will apologize for the eye gouge or the nut shot or whatever. Illegal blow is landed. Why? Because their goal is to win a fight, not to hurt somebody. 
They want to hurt somebody to the point where they win the fight. They're not trying to hurt their opponent to the point of ending their career or or or, or unaliving them or you, you know physically damaging them for for the long term. They just want to win the fight. Now, however that comes, it comes. But at no point, I've never I I, I cover MMA. I know fighters. These guys all just want to go home healthy enough to take care of their families. This girl doesn't even go and apologize. Like a look again. Jab in the eye. Pushed her. She pushed her, in fact, with her left hand. Goes to the ground. Don't even look at her. With no whistle. It's it's just so blatant. Like this is the angle that we got during the game. So we never saw the angle that has now surfaced everywhere to show us what really happened. <clears throat> and if you think that and Ryan Rucco says clearly wasn't intentional. Nah, Ryan, you didn't see the right angle at the time. And I don't blame you. Because you didn't see the right angle. But if you saw the right angle at that time, I don't think you'd have been saying it was clearly unintentional. Because it was clearly intentional. Clearly, clearly, clearly intentional. So you look at it. She never looks at her. She's not worried about her. Fuck her is her mentality. Now there's nothing. Let me go run out on the break. <clears throat> but yeah, that's um, that's DJ Nate Carrington for you. She is an absolute sociopath. Yeah, DJ Nate Carrington's a sociopath. I'm gonna tell you right now. If you date DJ Nate Carrington, Melissa Smith, she might be bigger, but I can, but I, but I know who runs that deal. Because Melissa Smith will lose on purpose against Dejanae Carrington to keep her happy. She'll play like utter garbage to keep Dejanae Carrington happy. We've we've seen it. They played five times. Melissa Smith seems to get beat to rebounds by Dejanae Carrington in every game. She seems to commit fouls on Carrington. That should never happen when you're guarding someone five inches shorter than you are in a turnaround jump shot. It's just convenient in how poorly Melissa Smith typically has played against the Connecticut Sun, while DJ Carrington typically plays pretty damn well. But I want to respond to videos that were sent to me by other people on Twitter. So like, as, I was, as I mentioned, I'm not typically on Twitter, but I did post this to Twitter, and I posted a comment about it, and it got a monster response. It, it wasn't my intent. I, I don't – yeah, it's nice. But we don't have much of a following on Twitter, so I never would have expected what we've gotten. But we have gotten on this tw Twitter post that I posted probably about 1 o'clock in the morning, yes, this morning, 160,000 views of it. Now, when you consider the fact that we only have 125 Twitter followers, I'd say that's pretty unbelievable. That's pretty freaking remarkable because we don't have that type of following. We've never had a YouTube video get 160,000 views. Now, I think our, our highest viewed video was about 50,000 views. And that was on a video uh, in long form. And I think on shorts, we've gotten probably 60, 60 to 65,000 views. Instagram, different story. We've broken a million views on Instagram, 900,000, 800,000, 700,000. We've done upwards of 8 million views on Instagram. YouTube's a little bit different. <coughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry. Instagram's a little bit different. I mean, um, YouTube's a little bit different. Twitter's a little bit different. But 160,000 views, over 4,600 likes, over 1,000 reposts, 400 comments. And I, my phone has been bing, dinging all day long. It's kind of irritating, honestly. <laughs> I understand why uh, actual real influencers turn their notifications off probably so they don't have to listen to it. Because your phone will ding. It's been dinging all day. But I'll take it because we want to grow our podcast naturally. And we want to grow our following and so forth. So we'll do what we need to do to, to, to do that. All that said, some people sent videos to me. So I want to share them. <clears throat> and these videos are done of the, for, with the intention of making Caitlin Clark look like a dirty player. Now, I'll remind you that Caitlin Clark has been flagrantly fouled more than anyone in the league. In fact, she, I think she's her, the amount of flagrant fouls against her, it's like 17 or 18 percent of all the flagrant fouls in the WNBA. Four of them alone were committed by the Chicago Sky on her. There's been countless other 
hatchet jobs on her that have not been called flagrant fouls. But then people get mad when she responds. You think that she's just going to stand there and let you beat her ass? You think she's going to allow that? For the most part, she has allowed it. She's allowed it to. She's allowed some of this stuff, a lot of it, in fact, to go unchecked. Well, there are people that sent me these videos. One person sent me these videos. It happened to be a white guy, which I thought was comical because another, another white dude capping, trying to look like he's cool or something, or trying to, I don't know, be down for whatever cause he's trying to show himself to be. Look, I don't care if you're white or black. If you don't see something wrong with what DJ Carrington did in this in this situation, there's something wrong with you, not me. This isn't about race. You gotta stop get 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 off the bullshit with the race attacks on me because I find them hilarious. I find them hilarious in a podcast that includes one white Hispanic male and one Haitian black male and one Jamaican black male. So you think those guys would be in a podcast with me if I was some kind of way? You think my black wife would have would be married to me if I was some kind of way? Like, come on. I may not agree with everything under the sun in terms of political views or whatever, and, and I'm very moderate in that regard when it comes to political views. I have opinions on both sides of the fence. I think most people do, in fact, too. I think they're just too afraid to say it. I know tons and tons of Black Americans that feel a certain way about a certain presidential candidate, and they won't voice it. They'll just they'll just vote the other direction. It's just the truth. I know them. But they'll never say it publicly because they get attacked for having an opinion that might differ from the con the. the The majority. And I don't care who they vote for. You shouldn't care who I vote for. And I'm not going in that direction of voting because I don't care about who votes for who. That's a private personal decision. And you vote for whoever the hell you feel. But I find it very, very interesting when you see people take a position just based on the fact that you don't like Caitlin Clark. And if you don't see something, if that was you getting eye gouged. I guarantee many of you who have taken that stance would be squaring up to fight. And if you had a child who was eye gouged, whether it's a child or an adult child in a sport who got eye gouged, you would be ready to lose your mind because you know how damn sensitive someone's eyes are. This isn't getting kicked in the nuts as a man. That shit will hurt. For about five or ten minutes, and then it will go away. This is potentially a career-ending situation. If you, DJ Carrington has long nails. Why they allow women to play with long nails is beyond me. But she has long nails, and they're acrylics, and they go under your eye. They can tear tear your retina, detach your retina, tear a cornea, tear your lens, and you can't see, and you're out for. An extended period of time. You need surgery potentially. You don't know what will happen. Eyes are so sensitive. You want to know what? I have a cousin who's blind in one eye because he got hit in the face with a softball. As an adult, it's very, very tender. He caught a softball to the eye. His left orbital was broken, crushed, and he was blinded in one eye. Had to have his eye removed. And has a, prost a prosthetic eye. And this happened to him in his early 30s. You think this is funny. You think this is a joke. You think I'm very, very into toughen up buttercup shit, but not with your eyes, bro. If you remember that scene from any given Sunday where the defensive tackle has his eye get popped out of his fucking head and it's on the field. If you've seen any any given Sunday, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The thought of that happening in a football game is nauseating. How that could happen, no idea. But I'm telling you right now, I am all for hit people as hard as you can hit them, body them up as much as you want to body them up. 
I know Carrington's going to body up Clark when she covers her. Cool. Do it. I expect nothing less. This shit? And then you act like it's no big deal. You don't even check on the person. You don't comment about it. I didn't hear any anything from an interview. I don't think she was in the post game press conference to be even be, be even asked about it because Connecticut was smart enough to keep her from the media because she has a tendency to say the wrong thing. But this is a video that I was sent. I got four of them. I watched this game live. I watched all these games live. But I saw this game live. I mean, I remember this game very clearly because on this particular play, Caitlin Clark, if you don't recall, is a right-handed ball player. She's dribbling, and her arm is being grabbed from behind on a break from the side by this Minnesota Lynx player. It's being flat grabbed. So she flings her arm out because you're grabbing her arm. What would you do if someone grabs your arm while you're dribbling the ball? Not fouling you, literally grabbing your arm. Your shoulder could get pulled out if your arm is being grabbed while you're moving at this high net. High, and of course, this is in slow motion. If you saw it in fast motion, you'd see how ridiculous it was. Review for possible hostile act. She's grabbing her arm and she flings her arm away. You have an issue with that? She's grabbing her. So she's being fouled. She's being fouled. And yet the video I'm sent is to show me that she's dirty while she's flinging her arm off. And maybe she maybe she smacked her in the face doing it. How about you don't grab her arm while she's dribbling? Let's go to the next one. This one is absolutely a foul. And I saw this game. Let's talk about this particular foul. She goes up to block the shot. Now she's probably not going to block it. This is nothing like when she got hit by Angel Reese. Angel Reese uncorked her arm all the way back and whacked her with her forearm across the face. In this particular situation, if you actually watched the play and saw the game, you knew what happened. Now they were crying for a flagrant. And if you had called it, I wouldn't argue it. But Caitlin Clark goes up. And Jordan Canada's face gets hit by darn near her armpit. Let's go look. Stop. Stop. Was she hit by the forearm, the fist? No, she literally gets hit by damn near her armpit. It's not the same thing. She was called for a foul. She deserved to be called for a foul. It's a foul. But that's not a flagrant foul. However, had it been called that way, I wouldn't have argued it because the league is soft as fucking butter. Professional sports are embarrassingly soft now. So everything now is a flagrant. Look at it again. She didn't wail back on her. She went up and the girl's head hit her in the armpit. It's not the same thing. I will show you another one. This one right here, she fouls Tiffany Hayes going to the rim. She doesn't hit her in the face. She grabs her freaking to keep her from shooting the ball. And you know what happens? Caitlin Clark smacks the back extension and gets called for a technical foul. Caitlin Clark wasn't smacking the back extension for getting called for a foul. She was smacking the back extension because she had just missed two free throws. And the referee wants to be sensitive and sit here and say, you're showing me up again. Or you're embarrassed in the game. Yet. A couple of days later, Diana Taurasi smacks the crap out of the basket support after making a layup and is not even looked at. That's a foul. She hit her on the arm. She didn't hit her in the face. She smacks there, and she gets called for a technical foul. Watch it again. Notice this. I'm not going to speak on how women fall. Because women as athletes are clumsy. These women fall in ways that I don't even know how you fall that way. Like, that's ridiculous how she felt. She wasn't yanked to the ground. Women athletes, especially in basketball, they just fall in all weird ways. You know, just because they're the lack of coordination, the lack of balance, the lack of athleticism, whatever it is. 
they fall. Now, here's the last one I want to show you. And this one's weird because they're trying to act like this is some type of flagrant situation. She's grabbing at the ball. Okay? She's grabbing at the ball. Can I get a, a larger view of this? Okay. Turn the corner and then... Her arm is around her other arm. Now, look, I think we've all established that Caitlin Clark complains a lot. <laughs> she does. But players will always say they didn't commit a foul. From that but even angle, these commentators, I don't even know what the they're saying. Because, okay, okay, her left arm is around her back. Her left arm is around her back. Her right arm is under the ball. She's trying to claim a jump ball. I get it. You're trying to sell it. Was this a flagrant foul? No. So it looks clean, but that is what we... And look how she just flails to the ground. This is how these women fell fall. They make it look like they just got shot out of a cannon or something like that. Like you threw them off the top turnbuckle of a wrestling ring. <laughs> she got to be kidding me. And Sammy with Yes, them. she got fouled. The Right there, the there's nothing flagrant about this. Over the nothing. top of the, sh the right wow. there, right That's there, it. the arm clear. So right here, Sammy looks like she's turned the right, corner and then. Off the screen. But this is the type of stuff that's being sent to me to compare what happened to Caitlin Clark in this game against things that she has done, and then they'll show me the video. Oh, let's find the video real quick before we. So this was the receipt in the game on Sunday where Caitlin Clark kind of got her back. She whacked her in the face. They could have called, they probably should have called the flagrant foul, but watch the play. This is what I want. You, I want you to watch the difference. See, this is where people are fake as shit because they're not watching the entire play. They're watching the result. What we saw on the play with Caitlin Clark getting eye gouged was a player guarding a player and the defensive player eye gouging the offensive player. No screens, nothing else other than a contest on a pass, and then randomly somehow the hand goes from this to this, and it lands in an eye socket and goes in an awkwardly down direction. But let's take a look. The screen, there's there's uh, Aaliyah Boston. You got Brianna Jones under Aaliyah Boston. You have Dijanae Carrington guarding her. She's going left. They trap her. They blitz her, right? They're blitzing her. But they don't blitz soft. Connecticut's not soft. Connecticut's a tough-ass team. And look, Connecticut punked Indiana yesterday. Like, let's keep it a buck. They punked them. All right. Look at where – look, look. remember, see who hit the ball. DJ Carrington, left arm, is coming down right on the ball. She strips her. She's underneath her now. So Caitlin Clark's in the air. And DJ Carrington is going underneath her to undercut her. Convenient, right? Convenient. She's going to undercut her. She's going underneath her. She's trying to avoid. Why wouldn't DJ Carrington go after the ball? No, she's going under Caitlin Clark to take her legs out. I'm not saying that it's for sure, but it looks, it looks like she's undercutting her to me. Rather than just going after the ball that she just swiped, she's under her ass. And now Caitlin Clark has one arm like this and one arm like this. And she flails back that left arm and whacks Carrington in the face. Boom. Coming down. She's underneath her. She knocked her contact lens out. If you wear contact lenses, you can have your contact lens knocked out without getting hit in the eye. So stop. You, you can have a contact lens fall out for being dry. I've had contact lenses. I've had contact lenses just fall out of my eye because they were dry as shit. But her contact lens got knocked out, and they're going to claim that, oh, that's a, that's an eye gouge. No, it's not. No, it's not. She's not even holding her eye. So think about that. Take a look at the response. Take a look at the reaction. Take a look at the reaction. She's not holding her eye. She's actually looking for her contact because her contact got knocked out of her head. Because, again, the, the, the shot popped her contact out. It happens. If you had not worn contacts, you would not know. Right? You would think that someone who's just got jabbed in the eyes, like, oh, my God, I'm in pain on the ground. Nah, not here. Like, what happened? 
that, that, you're not gonna that, what happened? Yeah, you got you got whacked in the face. That's what happened. And now she's begging for a fucking a review to make it a flagrant foul. When in fact, you could have actually called the initial foul on her for undercutting. Now she's looking for her contact lens. At no point is she talking about her eye. At no point is she saying she got gouged in the eye. So for the folks that are telling me that this is the same, she found Chelsea Mitchell found her contact lens. Do you see how actually the Indiana Fever players are actually looking at her? They're not actually like walking away from her. They're like, there's your contact on the floor. So that's it. That that that's it. Folks, I can do this with you. We can talk about it. We can be about it. But if you're gonna be real and you want to show me someone that did exactly what Dejanet Carrington did to Caitlin Clark and show me any other player that's ever done that in basketball, and don't tell me you just played at the park and someone did that to you. Mm -mm. NBA. WNBA, find me a video of what we just saw. Find me that video. You will not find it. It does not exist. You might find someone getting punched in the face, but you're not seeing someone get eye gouged. And you can feel how you feel. And we know how we I know why most some of you feel the way you feel. Just means you're cheap shot artists and you're just defending something that shouldn't be it's indefensible. It's like defending a cop. I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> It's on the, It's like the people that defend police officers who actually do messed up crap, and it's all on video right in your face. And if someone came to you and said, oh, well, you know, he felt like he was in danger. Really? I saw it on video. He wasn't in danger. He just, um, there was that one lady that was in wherever where the officer unloaded on, on her in front, of, in front of her stove. That man go belongs in he he belongs buried under the prison. He belongs buried under the prison. So don't tell me that like th this is the type like anyone that would defend that is just like folks that are defending this. Now I know it's not an a, a, a apples to apples comparison, just the idea that you can defend something that's so clearly, blatantly on video in your face. And you're going to sit here and tell us. That it's not. That's all I got. Love to hear your thoughts and comments. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now.